That's Congressman Nunes. It's really great to talk to you, your work on this case. Um, I think when we look back on it, you'll be remembered for it. You've done some incredible work, and I deeply appreciate it. Having said that, the core of the conspiracy theory against Donald Trump has been that Joseph Mifsud had some ties to the Russian government, relayed information to Trump campaign member George Papadopoulos, and that set off this tide of the FBI investigatory trail. But, Congressman, Bob Mueller, after millions of dollars, 500 search warrants, multiple FBI agents interviewing people, makes no such claim in his report. He says Ms. Sud has Russian connections. That's far different than him being a Russian agent. What are we missing here? Well, you know, John, you know Dan, there's always this saying, uh, where there's smoke, there's fire. But in this case, there's not even smoke. Uh, there's not even any ashes. Uh, the fact that Joseph Misfood, who was a Maltese diplomat before he was a professor, uh, he's seen in pictures with people like Boris Johnson. He's leading uh, talks at NATO. He's involved with, with many uh, U.S. agencies, including the State Department and the FBI. And, and let's just top it off with this. In early 2017, as the House Intelligence Committee is beginning our investigation, just steps away from that investigation. Joseph Mifsud was, guess where? In the U.S. Capitol at the invitation of the State Department or a group associated with the State Department, members of Congress were there. So, uh, look, the fact that Joseph Mifsud knows some Russians, yeah, I think that's uh, very likely. Uh, the fact that Mueller ignores certain documents uh, that he actually uses, he uses pieces of, of news stories in his, what I call the Mueller dossier, the Mueller report. And in those same news reports, Dan, you have evidence in the news report where they call them these writers that they thought were good enough to use for, to make one point. They don't use the fact that those writers claim that he was a Western intelligence asset. So this whole misfit thing has stunk for a long time. It makes no sense. I have no idea whether or not if he's a Russian asset or a Western intelligence asset or, or a double agent or what. All I know is that after $40 million, we still don't know any more than we knew before. And this is supposedly the guy that knew about the Clinton emails. And, Congressman, one of the suspicious pieces I found in the Washington Post report is they go, they, they emphasize at length Mifsud's efforts to cultivate relationships with Russians. Well, if he was a Russian asset, then why is he cultivating relationships? I mean, do you understand how that doesn't make any sense? So, on one hand, you're telling yeah. us Mifsud's the key figure in a Russian exchange of information with the Trump team to win an election. And on the other hand, in the Washington Post, you're reporting that he's still taking trips to Russia, trying to ingratiate himself to people. I mean, both of those stories can't be true at the same time. Well, the other weird thing about this, too, Dan, is, is that you have the mainstream media who got this totally wrong. They were wrong about the hoax. Uh, you talk about it on your show all the time. You've written a book on it. The many people that you just had on, the, on just before us have talked about this. When are they just going to give it up? Like, these are Russian hoaxers. Like, what on earth is the Washington Post doing, you know, jumping back into the Russia hoax water? Uh, and I think what they found is they look foolish again. Because, look, the only guy that we know that has said for sure that Mifsud is a Russian asset is guess who? James Comey, yep, just about it. a month ago, in the pages of the Washington Post. And so then the Washington Post decided, you know, they have all of their, their supposed uh, sources that they don't name. I mean, none of, none of this makes any sense, but I don't understand why the mainstream media continues to jump into these waters. Why don't they actually try to go get the truth, yeah. right? They, they, interview, uh, what some, they interview a lady uh, in, the, in the story uh, that's, that's at one time had affiliation. She's a U.K. citizen. Uh, Sam, Sam Bai or Samba, yeah, I think is the name. You yeah. probably know the name. Yeah, sure. Arvind or Samba. Yeah, yeah. So, so why do you. So clearly she knows Mifsud, right? They interviewed her. Why not ask her point blank? You work with this guy, you work the State Department, you work with the FBI in the past. Who is this guy? Why would you not have a whole, you know, two or three or four paragraphs just interviewing her? She could probably tell you a lot on and, Joseph and, Mipson. And so Congressman, I just got Mueller couldn't call him a Russian asset. I just got a few seconds Go left, but I just want to get this one last question. And also, why isn't there some kind of damage assessment being done by the government if a Russian asset, Joseph Mifsud of 2017, where is the damage assessment at this point? Well, there, that's, and that's been our major point the whole time. If Mifsud wasn't a Russian asset, 
my God, you've got the FBI, the State Department, the U.S. Congress, uh, all of our allies, NATO, Boris Johnson. I mean, they've all been compromised by this Russian asset, famous Russian asset, Joseph Mifsud. So look, the fact that they're not doing a, a damage assessment, uh, Dan, I think tells you and the American people all you need to know. Highly unlikely that Mifsud is a Russian asset. Congressman, thanks so much for your work on this. It's really been incredible. Uh, President Trump is already setting records in the 2020 election. We'll tell you how, how to get reaction from Kaylee McEnany, Lisa Booth, and Leslie Marshall.